once again, welcome everyone to our Sketch the Moon workshop. This is uh, the very first workshop that the Ontario Science Centre is running virtually. So I want to thank all of you for joining us today. Um, uh, uh, Bettina uh, Forger uh, is an artist, as I mentioned, is pursuing a PhD in art education at Concordia University, uh, where she's also a public scholar. Her research project examines the recontextualization of art and science and how women and girls may connect to STEM through art. Bettina's creative work for focuses on space sciences, inspired by her avid engagement with amateur astronomy. So she may ask you some questions about who here is an amateur astronomer. And she's exhibited her artwork in the USA, Canada, Germany, Iceland, Singapore, and Nicaragua. Uh, and she also owns and runs the Visual Voice Gallery and is director of the SETI Institute's Artist in Residence program. So please join me in welcoming Bettina, who's going to be leading us through this workshop. She'll begin with a short presentation about her art exhibitions and projects, and then uh, get into the hands-on portion uh, with all of you to follow along. I know I have my my paper, my pencil, my eraser, my pencil sharpener, and my science notebook. So I'm all ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fantastic. Well, welcome everyone and thank you for joining me on this beautiful uh, Saturday morning. I'm just going to start sharing my screen because I have a couple of things uh, to show you. Let's share. Here we go. All right. Um, so what are we going to do today? I'm going to talk a little bit about my background in amateur astronomy. I'm just going to show you like a telescope and, and how I got started with uh, sketching the moon. Then I'm going to quickly like show you a couple of examples of moon sketches that I did uh, from a series that I call Women with Impact. And then we're going to get cracking and we are going to draw together. So I started uh, in amateur astronomy about 20 years ago. I'm actually a trained artist come from a family of artists, everyone in my family is an artist, and I went to art school as well. But I've always loved science, and specifically astronomy. So a while ago, quite a few years ago, for my birthday, I bought myself a telescope. Uh, and you may have seen behind me that big honking telescope in the back. Maybe when my picture is bigger again, uh, you will, you'll be able to see it again. But um, I got involved with the, um, at the time I lived in Singapore, so I joined the astronomy club there. When I moved to Canada, I joined the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada, and they did something interesting. They did the Lunar Observing Challenge. And the great thing about the moon is you can see it anywhere, even downtown, even like I, li I don't live downtown, but I live very close to downtown. I'm surrounded by streetlights. If you're in Toronto, you're probably in the same boat as I am. So if you're interested in observing the night sky, what you're gonna do? Well, actually, um, the moon is a great object to look at with the naked eye. With binoculars, if you have them, uh, you should try it, rummage. Uh, you probably have binoculars somewhere, train them at the moon, and you'll start seeing the, um, you know, the craters come out a lot more. But uh, I'm going to show you actually my telescope, the first one that I bought, I'm just going to stop sharing right now. I can find my cursor. Here we go. Um, and let me see if you can see this. This is my little Meet ETX. Uh, that's a little uh, telescope that fits in a backpack. And this little guy has been in Australia, in the Grand Canyon, in Germany, uh, all over Canada. And so I'm just going to take this off here at the front so you can see inside this is there to keep the dust out and inside you'll see you'll have mirrors so if you see old um like pictures of galileo at his telescope he'll look like at the bottom of the telescope and you look through um that's because the telescope has uh, two lenses in it that's a refractor this is a reflector it has mirrors inside so um it, needs, uh, it doesn't need to be as long because the light comes in here, bounces off the mirror in the back, bounces off that little mirror in the front, the little one that you see here. And then it comes out um, up here. So this, this thing, that is just for you 
uh, to spot. It's not, so it has its own little uh, lens. It sees much more of the night sky. So it's easier to see because this is really zoomed in. And then for here, pop that out. And then you put in, uh, I'm just gonna place this here, an eyepiece, which I have put away carefully. And that goes in here. Got a screw here. Plop. And now you're watching the moon. If you're looking through there, like that. Uh, also this one, you can take that off and put um, a camera through it. So you can actually use the telescope uh, like it's a really, really big telephoto lens. And I've done that too. It's actually a really fun project to um, photograph the moon at different phases. There's a lot of, um, it's a great project if you're getting into amateur astronomy and you want something to do, uh, just to track, you know, you're tracking where is the moon uh, every day? How does it move? You know, it, it sort of changes uh, 90 minutes, right? And its position also changes. So that's a fun thing to track and how the phases uh, change as well. I'm just gonna put that dust thing back on because you don't want dust in your telescope. That's a bad idea. So with my trusty MIDI TX and also with actually now, I use that big honking thing there. Same thing, it's also a reflector, but the mirror is a lot bigger. That's an eight inch mirror. This little MIDI TX, that's a three and a half inch. Still really good to watch the moon with the planets. With the bigger one, captures more light so you can see deep sky objects like uh, nebula and galaxies. But with my uh, little telescope, when I'm observing the moon, so this um, obs lunar observing challenge that I did, um, the RASC has um, these kind of uh, sheets, this, uh, this kind of notebook. I would print these out actually individually. And, and they will ask you like, um, you know, like specific observations that you're supposed to do like look at the crater rim, is there secondary cratering, is there an ejecta blanket? So it really forces you to observe more. Um, but I always, always like to draw as well, because it gives you a much better idea of what you were looking at, because it really focuses you, uh, uh, helps you to focus on the actual drawing. So I got really into the idea of drawing at the eyepiece. And as I, I'm just gonna share my screen again, and show you what I did then. Here we go. Um, so I noticed that all the um, lunar crater, when I look at an atlas of the moon to see what, what moon crater I'm actually looking at, because at, when you first start, they all kind of look alike to you. So I have a, a moon atlas, and I noticed that all the moon craters are named after people. So at one day, day I wondered how many of these people are women. So I counted all the cataloged named craters, like 1,605. And how many of those do you think are named after women? 30, only 30, which is 1.9%, which is this much. It's a really, really small portion. And I thought that's not okay. Um, somebody should do something about that. Maybe at least highlight this fact because women have made a lot of significant contributions to the field of, of astronomy and science in general. So I thought I would just make a drawing of every moon crater named after a woman, and I called the series Women with Impact. And here, uh, basically, um, because half of the um, moon craters that are named after women are on the far side of the moon, uh, I'm actually not just working with my telescope, but I'm also making uh, screen grabs uh, from uh, uh, websites, from NASA websites that have really fantastic uh, photographs of the moon. It's called L-Cross. That's a really great probe that is still uh, in orbit around the moon. And so I would do a screen grab and then I just draw them all. And here a couple of examples, not all the 30, um, but just a couple of highlights. And what I realized as I was drawing them, that moon craters are all very individual and also different. And basically I was drawing a portrait of each moon crater. So I love this one uh, because it's so dramatic and has this beautiful, huge secondary impact crater on the crater rim. And Levitt has this really strange um, sort of crater floor that is half really smooth and half really bumpy and has this beautiful central peak. 
and Maori crater has this kind of fluted, uh, weird crater rim that sort of, you know, crumbles inside of the crater and has all that beautiful sort of rugged terrain uh, on the crater wall. And McAuliffe is just so dramatically lit. Um, so I think, um, me, I hopefully that gave you some inspiration for you to start drawing. And I want us to get started. So I'm going to um, basically let us have a look at different pencils. So should I stop sharing? Can you guys see uh, over here my sketchbook? I just want to make sure that everyone can see it, that it's highlighted, or if it's easier uh, if I stop sharing my screen so you can see it. Maybe I'll just start, stop sharing my screen for now so it'll be easier for you guys to see this over here. Um, because we are going to look at uh, different kind of pencils. Um, so you just need a regular pencil. And I'm so glad that you asked, like, what kind of paper do you need? You can use any kind of paper. You can just use, you know, like, this is basically photocopy paper that I sketched on. And this works. Um, it, it's a little smoother than a sketching paper. Sketching paper has more texture on it, so it hangs on uh, to the um, to the graphite more in the pencil. So what I want to talk a little bit is about drawing materials. Um, as you can see, maybe look at this. I'm a pencil nerd. Of course, as an artist, God, do I love pencils, and I buy lots of different ones. And uh, when you go into an art supply store and you see these kind of strange pencils with things like, what does that even mean? Two uh, H seven B. Uh, let's talk about that just for a second. Um, the pencil that you probably have lying around, uh, the ones that hotels give out, the ones that you buy at the dollar store, they're HB pencils. Uh, HB number two. Let me see if I can get that sharper. There we go. These are great. And actually, if that's all you have, you'll be perfectly able to draw everything. And what I'm going to just show you, just to show you the difference, so I'm just going like, you know, pressing really hard and then I'm pressing less so we're getting some gray tones and I'm going lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter okay. like this. So that's kind of the gray scale that you get with, uh, with an HB pencil. So there are other pencils that have an H on it. So H stands for hard and so basically pencils they are graphite and a binder. I'm just going to show you this. You see this is a big a hunk of graphite. You can even buy them. It's basically a pencil just without the wood. So this is just graphite and um, it's kind of metal. You can see that it's kind of shiny and it has binder in it so it doesn't crumble in your hand. So you know you can see like this is basically the same kind of thing. Um, but this one has more binder like an H pencil. So H means hard. It has more binder in it less graphite. So if I do the same exercise, and I pre I'm pressing really hard right now, and you see how this kind of just comes out as a gray, and it doesn't come out as, um, like as, a, as a full black. So if you want to do something really dark, like maybe draw moon shadow, uh, shadows of moon craters, this would not be the best pencil to use. But for like lighter areas, like, um, uh, like the ejector blanket, or maybe you know, one of the central peaks, Having an H pencil can be really handy, and you'll also see um, that it makes very thin lines because it's so hard. So for detail work, these are pretty handy. And um, there's a scale. So um, the B is the opposite. Oops, I'm just going to make sure that you can actually see it. Focus, focus. I was going to go there. You can see the seven. That's a seven B. So it goes from H, H B. That's in the center. 7B is like super soft and like the two, that's a 2H. You even can get like 7H. Uh, and so let's do the same thing with the, with the 7B. Just look how dark that is. That's nearly like charcoal dark. That's crazy dark. And so I'm getting, letting off the pressure. But on the other hand, you don't get a really like light gray, even if I like barely press it down. Uh, it's still quite dark. So this, you know, you won't get these kind of grays. So this is why when you go to an art supply store and you have these like different grades of pencils, um, maybe a good idea if you think you're gonna sketch more. If you don't, and uh, um, 
you just have the HP with the funky little eraser on the back. That's fine. Oh, a thing about these eraser, uh, don't use them. I bought this, I don't know, a couple of months ago, and it does not erase. It just basically, it just makes everything just, this is basically rubs the graphite into the paper more. So you want to get a, a decent eraser if you actually want to erase anything. Um, I don't even actually use erasers that much, but just in case, have a pencil sharpener. That's all you need. You don't need a lot of equipment for drawing, which is one of the fun things. Uh, so let's get started. Um, I'm going to talk about how to frame your crater. So I, I picked Aristarchus crater for us because it's a really great crater to draw because it's so easy. It doesn't have a lot of, um, you know, like central peaks or rills or something. Um, I, you may have seen, you know, like other craters like this. You see, there's a lot going on. That, that's what you guys who are more advanced, maybe you want to do this one. Uh, I'm going to draw that one. And what I'll do is you'll be able to see Aristarchus crater on my uh, sketch pad, but I'm going to share my screen uh, where I have the other crater that is a bit more uh, complex. For those of you who are artists, you want a bit more of a challenge. So I'm just gonna share my screen again. Uh, okay, share. Let's do this. So this is uh, Archimedes. We're going to do that one. Did I say Aristarchus earlier? I meant Archimedes. And this is Posidonius. So you can see that it's got, it's got rills, it's got like big honking secondary craters. There's a lot going on. It has a very fractured terrain. So if you want to um, uh, try your hand at that one, I'm gonna just leave that up on the screen. And for those of you who want to uh, follow me here with uh, Archimedes, we'll do that. Uh, so the first thing, so I'm, the, the reason I'm making this round, I'm just gonna take this off here. Um, is that when you're looking through a telescope, remember the eyepiece that I showed you, this thing? Everything you see through here is gonna be round. So uh, I want to, to sketch as though you're a real amateur astronomer at a telescope. So we're gonna do like a virtual telescope experience. And for that reason, I cut out this, um, this just out of a sheet of paper, like a little frame. And this kind of is the same as though you're looking through the telescope because you're, you're looking for like, where is my target? So you sort of, you know, so the, ah, here's Aristarchus, but how are you going to frame it? And the way I want like framing things is that um, I have uh, basically secondary um, topo uh, topography around the crater that gives me an indication of where the crater is situated, and that helps me draw it correctly. So I'm just gonna tap that down here. So what I like is, so we have the crater here in the center, but we've got this little mountain here, and two craters there, and a crater there, and that can help me um, sketch it better. So I, I think of a clock face. So basically, this is like 12 o'clock, six o'clock, three o'clock, and nine o'clock, and then you can decide, okay, so you get like one thing here, it's just off 12 o'clock. Then when you have this, like I like it, uh, this crater because it looks a bit like a speech bubble to me. It's got that speech bu bubble thing, but it's not exactly, if, you, if you're looking like this, this is six o'clock, it's a little off to the side and then it'll make your drawing look more realistic. Um, so if you have three o'clock here, this is a little higher up, and that'll make it easier for you to do your first sketch and situate your, your drawing, uh, and you have a nice composition. Because, um, of course, this is also a scientific drawing, but first of all, it's a drawing, it's a piece of art. And also, I want us to, um, you know, be kind of loose about the way we sketch. I mean, if you look at these, um, they, they are very loose, quick sketches, something that you can really do at the telescope, because imagine it's, you know, it's dark out, you're on the street light, uh, you've got mosquitoes buzzing around your ears, you don't want to spend like two hours and, and do a really super detailed sketch of like every bump and, and the cranny there. You want to have a quick idea of what that crater looks like 
or some cases that's clouding over, just you know, to get the information down. And uh, so we're going to do it like really more like a loose sketch. And the first thing we're going to do is outlines. I find, especially with people who are new to drawing, the temptation is to, um, you know, sort of start with a little detail, and then get into detail here, and then to kind of get lost as you're starting to draw. And also if you do that and clouds come in, you've got very little information down. So the way we, um, we draw basically in art school, uh, if, even if you're doing like life drawing or still life, the first thing you want to do is just do your outlines and you take your HB pencil. Don't press too hard in case you want to like um, erase something. And I'm just going to go with the, with the biggest feature. So I'm going to like do the crater rim here. Let's see. Yeah, I want to just put this up a little higher so you guys can see that too. I think of the crater rim. It's like a little ear thing going on here. Like this. Um, and then this is like maybe the outline of the shadow here. I love, so the shadows are just so important um, in moon crater drawing because they give you an indication of uh, the actual shape of the crater uh, because they tell you how high the crater rim is and uh, if there are central peaks or anything because everything that casts a shadow, right? So hang on, I've got this little, that's a little bump there. I'm just going to do that. You see, and it's really fast. I like this little ear that comes out here. That's really distinct. You want to look at like what is the most distinct feature of the thing that I'm drawing and just like put that, like imagine you've got like a big cloud bank coming in and you just want to get this down. Uh, so here's my speech bubble. Speech bubble has a little hook there that in and then it kind of goes about like this. I want to put the other side of the crater floor here. And it goes around like that. And, and, and you know I'm going pretty fast. If, if you're new to, to drawing and you just want a little bit more time, you go at your own pace. I'm doing the shadowy area here right now and it goes in like that. Bettina, we have a few yeah. questions. Yes, go ahead. Um, what type of number pencils are we using? So I'm just going to be using the, uh, the HB. That's what I'm using right now. When I'm doing the um, moon uh, crater's shadows, I'm going to go to a B pencil that is a little higher number. So I'm going to uh, probably use my 7B, if you have a 4B or any kind of like higher B pencil, that would be great. And then when I'm we're doing the grays of the um, you know like well, the crater floor and what's around the crater, um, I'm going to also use the 2H. But if you don't have those and you only have like the regular HB pencil, that's totally fine. You can do the entire thing just with an HB. And I've done uh, moon sketching sessions just with an HB. It works great. I just showed you the other ones just in case you really like drawing and uh, you may want to you know um, sort of expand your repertoire of uh, of art supplies because it can be really confusing when you go to an art supply store and you can just see like all these different diff different kind of pencils with different numbers that's great thanks and then one other question do we need to make a frame oh no if you don't um if you don't have a frame, ah, I should have mentioned that. You know, the way I make a frame, because I know I have a compass somewhere. Do I find it? No. Um, but uh, you can just use like, um, you know, lids. I also use yogurt lids to draw from if you have, um, you know, masking tape. That also works. But you don't need to use um, a frame. You can just, just, uh, just free form uh, and, and just, Go with the flow. Great, thanks. We're having uh, some people were having some difficulty seeing uh, your uh, your sketchbook, so I've just okay. uh, uh, removed your slides for now. So we'll just okay. be focusing on uh, Eric, Eric. I think it's Archimedes. Yes, this is Archimedes.
So would it be easy if I stop uh, sharing my slide maybe of the Posidonias? Yes, I was able to stop that. Okay, cool. So actually then I'm gonna just escape that here as well. All right, so um, I'm just going to do like this area right here. It looks like there's some shadowing going on. And then there's this really, this kind of thing is really hard because it's so amorph and so jumbly that I'm just going to sort of indicate a little bit what's going on there. Okay, I've got that little thing. We've got outlines, even if it starts raining at this point, you're bored, or there are too many mosquitoes and you're going home now, you've got a decent sketch, you know? So we start with outlines. After that, now we're going into shadows. And this may seem really scary because um, you're really committing uh, and going really, really dark very soon. There's two reasons for that. I find that beginners are very uh, shy about using very dark blacks. And then if you don't make your shadows dark enough, everything else on your palette will be too pale. Um, also, drawing the, uh, if you add the eyepiece and uh, you're waiting too long to draw the shadows, they will move. Because like on Earth, um, you know, the sun and the, and the moon and the Earth, we're all moving. And maybe a half an hour in, you realize that these shapes are not the same shapes anymore. So it's just good to lock them in right away. Now I'm using the 7B, I'm really going for it. Look how dark that is. And that basically gives you uh, the two ends of the spectrum between the total white. So we're gonna basically like here, these are our highlights. And we're not gonna touch that. That's just gonna be the color of the paper itself. Uh, and now it's so great that we've got those outlines, right? Because now we know where everything is and um, we don't need to worry about having to erase anything because these 7B pencils, they are hard to erase because they are super dark. And I love how juicy this is. That is that's a very nice black. So the thing with um, shadows on the moon, they are so black because there is no atmosphere on the moon. So on Earth, you have a little bit of refraction from Earth's uh, atmosphere, the, the water, in, in the atmosphere. So um, you get a bit of like a more diffuse, uh, sort of softer shadow, but not on the moon. It's just, just unforgiving black. And this is why I use um, these very, very like, soft B pencils. And sometimes, ah, um, maybe if you ever look at the uh, recording of this again, you go back to the Women with Impact sketches. I actually use um, black acrylic because even um, the very, very soft B pencils, it's still graphite and there is still, um, it's still a little silvery because graphite is just basically like a metal. And so that's a little shadow here. So now I'm just really going for it. Um, and I just like the, my, my moon shadows really dark. I'm just going really fast. I should really pay more attention because like, and teaching and sketching at the same time. So normally I'm, I'm a bit more focused. But I just wanna get this down. Okay, and here's a really nice big juicy shadow. Look at that. And you know what I find as soon as we put the blacks in, it becomes really three-dimensional really fast. And we get the sense of that this is a crater, it's a three-dimensional object. So we, with the outlines, we basically got like the character of the crater down really fast, like that little speech bubble and all the uh, secondary craters that are happening around it. And now that we're using uh, the black right away, uh, it really helps us sort of distinguish that this is a beautifully lit, dramatic moon crater. I'm going to here, I'm super black. And I'm pressing really hard, no grays, because you can see here, that's not gray at all, it's just, atmosphere free super dark black there are actually some um craters on the moon like on the southern pole where the sun never shines and uh there are uh, probes that are going to go up there soon and there has already been one that impacted on one of those very dark moon craters on the southern pole and there's evidence of water or at least hints of water 
So um, that could be very promising if we ever want to send people to the moon. It would be a little that we know that there's water up there. Okay. So you see, I'm going really fast. You don't need to be precious about it and overthink it. So now I'm going to go for this like really rough terrain. Yeah, but Tina, we had a few people just asking just if you could go a little bit slower. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. And but is it okay if the drawing isn't exact? That's a no, it, no, because um, actually this is kind of hard to slow for me. Um, you go at your own time. It's just, you know, as an artist, I, I, I can tend to speed along. And I also don't want to keep you too long. I'm just going to take, oh, we've got plenty of time. It'll be good. So I'm gonna just move it here, move it here, and it's already starting to look like the crater. Okay. other one. Um, let me see if there's an area where I haven't done any black yet. Yeah, there's some little great I'm seeing here. Okay. So I'm going to give you maybe like another minute or so and then I'm going to go and then we're going to go and tackle the grays. And don't, don't worry too much about the details. We get to the details later. I think this could be a little longer. So you can adjust. Yeah, it's a nice, grilled terrace, the crater rim. I really like this one. Nice, smooth crater floor and really easy to spot with the telescope. It's the good position, so um, you can see it well. And what you'll also notice if you look at this uh, crater on different days, um, the shadowing will be totally different. So it would be a fun exercise even to do the crate, same crater, but on different days, and you'll see how different it, differently lit it is. Okay, well, I'm you, just gonna- I was gonna, gonna ask Bettina, what, what if you don't have a telescope, like in your, uh, you can, we're sketching from, from printouts and from, uh, photos today, which uh, yeah. we can continue to do, but are there ways to sketch the moon as you see it? Yeah, I mean, you can totally, that's actually a really nice exercise, and that uh, lunar observing challenge that I talked about, um, that is one of the uh, exercises actually to look at the moon, you know, when it's really uh, new, when it's just a little sickle, uh, and to uh, spot the, all the maria or the big dark areas with the naked eye and draw them. So even with the naked eye, you could draw the moon. You could draw the moon in relation where it is to your landscape. So you can sketch your neighbor's house and you know see where's where's the moon. Uh, like say you know like you've got your neighbors like this is your street. You've got somebody's house, and then it's like where's the moon one day and where's the moon the next day, you know, and, and put down what time it is, you know, maybe it's seven o'clock. And then uh, that I think that's a really fun exercise that also helps you to understand what the moon does and how it moves. Um, again, with binoculars, if you have binoculars, that's really cool way to uh, look at the moon as well. And you know where I get these um, um, uh, sketches, uh, these, um, these images, I'm going to in a minute uh, just check the website. And I'm going to I'm going to uh, write it out for you because there are really great websites from NASA that have uh, uh, wonderful um, images of the moon. You can just do a, do a screen grab for, on your computer and just have it up on the computer or do a printout and uh, and sketch from there. And actually, it's a good idea to do it. So um, if you even if you ever have a telescope later and want to do that, you, you already know how to sketch. Uh, moon craters. You have a little bit of practice. So I'm just going to move on. We're going to do grays now. So for the grays, um, I'm just using 
the, oops, I wanted to use this one. I want to use the um, HP pencil. And so the trick, that's a trick with this. Um, I've been using, holding my pencil like this, and it just, it's okay, but it doesn't um, give you a lot of surface area. I like to hold it like this and hold it, so, sort of you, you um, draw with the, with the long side of the pencil, and it gives you a much more even gray as well. So what I'm gonna do is just fill in, it becomes nearly painterly when you draw like that. Like, I feel like nearly like I'm holding a paintbrush. And here, this is a really even gray. The nice thing with this crater is um, that that gray area is really easy to shade in. I'm just basically doing all that really smooth area around here. I'm just gonna move that a little bit to the side. And also, if you're still doing the um, the shadows, you can just continue doing those. Because I know maybe I'm going a bit fast, but I want to make sure that we stay within our like one hour time frame. And that's just a little patchy. I'm trying to get that a little bit more even. There we go. That looks better. And if you now look at uh, like a gray scale. This is like a 50% gray, so this is 100% like black, and then we have the white just like at zero. So we have a good gray scale. Bettina, at the end, yep. um, are you able, uh, we have a request to maybe uh, show each of your pages as step by step yes. at the That's end? And that's exactly what I wanted to do and why I have made different pages so we can maybe do that and you can even do like a screen grab of each one so that you have the whole process. Um, so this is why I didn't do just one drawing but do all these different drawings. So yeah, that's a really good idea. I'm just gonna do the gray here. You can see it goes a lot faster when you do it flat like this. And don't worry about the details at this point. So I'm trying to get this really nice and smooth because this is really, this is nice smooth terrain right here. And this is a bit more jumbly. I'm gonna just sketch that slightly differently. I'm just trying to do all the smooth areas first and try to get them as even as I can, even on the crater floor. Okay, I'm gonna just uh, sharpen this again because it's getting to the wood and I'm noticing that the wood is starting to um, sort of scratch into the paper and that's not good. Okay, here we go. Did you say this was an H uh, uh, pencil that you were using? Yeah, that's an HB, just the regular the HB. Regular HB. Yeah. So then for those who are just using, like me, who are just using the HB for everything, it's just how hard you're pressing, like you were demonstrating. That's right, that's right. So if you are, you know, just kind of, so if you're pressing really hard, this is how you're doing the shadows, right? And then I'm pressing sort of medium hard. Now I'm doing the, uh, the crater floor. And then if you wanna do details, well, you can get fairly light with this. Fairly light with an HB, it's fine. HB is totally fine. So I got it fairly, uh, not quite even, I want to get into the size here. It's starting to look a lot more like a crater already. The nice thing with the moon, it's black and white already. So even if you have a pencil, you've got the colors spot on. So here's a little trick if you are, um, if you do have an H pencil, if you want to get a really super smooth gray, um, I like to go over it with the, with the H pencil because it it has a slightly different gray color. Uh, and doing this kind of rubs the graphite more into the paper and you don't get the little white bumps. So you get a more even gray. Uh, so I'm just gonna do that. And if you, if you don't have an H pencil, don't worry about it. It'll still be cool. 
um, because the tone of the grade doesn't change that much, but I, I, I just like doing it. So just in case you have an H pencil, I'm just gonna demo what the, what the difference is. I think it gives you a really nice gray. It's a more saturated gray. Try to get around my bumps here. And when you do this at the eyepiece, time just flies. It's amazing. You're just so absorbed. Um, when I did this with the uh, with the RAS, this uh, sort of lunar observing challenge. I was, uh, I was leading the lunar observing group, and we would meet maybe every other week to do this together because it's so much easier to do an observing challenge if there's a bunch of you, just so you stay motivated. And, you know, sometimes it would be cloudy, you know, the Montreal Nebula, of course. And uh, I said, like, you know what, guys, come on over anyway. We'll just do some uh, moon crater sketching. So we'll have something to do. And, uh, you know, we'll learn about moon craters anyway. And they were like, oh, we can't sketch. It's like, come on over anyway. And it all did so great. It's like, oh, I, I don't know how to sketch. I have been in art school, you know. It's like, it doesn't matter. It's all practice. And we would basically, I would make a cup of tea and all, you know, all of us, we would sit in like my living room and we all had sketch pads balancing on our knees and we'd all be sketching and it would be so quiet. Normally we'd be very chatty, even at the telescope when we're observing, but there's something about drawing that is just, it just absorbs you. And all you could hear is just basically the scratching of the pencil on the paper and Occasionally somebody's sharpening a pencil. And like an hour would go by, an hour and a half. It's like, oh God, I've been drawing all this time. And it's just, um, you know, it's very calming. You have had a stress day. Just get a moon crater out and draw it. So that's already pretty nice gray. Um, so now for, this is also equally great, but it's kind of a, a rougher terrain. So what I do is kind of, I become a little bit more expressionistic and I sort of press down maybe harder at the front of the nib of the pencil than in the back. So I get more like a, again, more like brush strokes. And that just gives you an indication that this terrain is just different than, than that smooth terrain. I should have probably done a bit more here to begin with. That's kind of a, I feel like that's like a, channel coming here. Maybe I'll even take a pencil for that one. And so for these kind of details, that's really tough for beginners because that's where you get lost. They're so hard to decipher um, what that is. And so basically when you're just doing this more expressionistic type of drawing, you worry less about it and you're getting all the information down anyway because you want to grab the essence of that crater. So when you look back at this, you'll see like, Archimedes, of course. There we go. And the same here, it's also kind of a rough jumbled terrain. So you get a little bit of an idea of the geology as well. I like that, that, that way that you, you're capturing that the geology is different. That's, yeah. That's really, that's really nice. Thanks. Uh, um, and like you said, it's a great way to record that uh, when you go back and, 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 uh, and uh, look at your drawings, you can remember that all these craters are different and they have different geological features. Exactly. And I find that once you draw a crater, you will never forget it. It's like it tattoos itself into your brain. Um, you'll always remember that little speech bubble. So now I'm going to just go uh, in and I'm, take, I'm taking the H uh, now, but you can stay with the same one. And we're going to just uh, gray in the crater rim. It's a little lighter than the rest. It's a little stick out thing. And I like to go uh, and follow the shape of the crater because you see all these wrinkles here. And I was going to follow these along. Um, 
And again, you know, pay attention to the geology. Get, get, just get a sense of, of these kind of thumbs. And this is the, the interesting thing about drawing, because to draw something, you kind of need to understand it. You understand what it is you're looking at so you can draw it, right? So, so you can have an, create an accurate impression in 2D of the thing that you're looking at in 3D. It takes a little bit of brain power and it'll, just a little bit of practice, but not that much. Um, I think, you know, once you kind of stick with it, you get better really fast. And it's, it's kind of a really satisfying thing to do. So here. Yeah. We have a couple of questions in the chat yes. asking if you offer art classes. Um, I do, uh, um, but I, uh, in the university context, I'm, I'm a part-time professor at Concordia University, so I teach art there. Um, I used to uh, run uh, also art classes in my gallery because I think an art gallery should be more than just exhibit paintings. I think it's also fun if it becomes more of an active, creative place. So once in a while, so before COVID, COVID you know, I, I did a lot of like art science um, uh, workshops there that also included painting and monoprint and all kinds of stuff like that. And your gallery is in Montreal, is that correct? My gallery is in Montreal, that's right. So if you're in Montreal, uh, check out Visual Voice and you know, you're always welcome to uh, get in touch with me. If you have any other questions that you think of later. Okay, I think we're pretty much there with the grays. I want to also keep an eye on the time. Okay, I think we should move on because I can get now really lost on the details. The next thing is details. So now the thing that I told you not to do right at the beginning, now you do it. Now that you've got all the information and you've got your grays and the crater looks like, you know, the crater, um, it's, now it's really fun to go and say like, okay, I, you know, I see all these little secondary craters, like these tiny little mini impact craters there, and I could maybe give an indication that they're there. So I'm gonna take um, my, my dark pad one. It's like it's like a const drawing a constellation of craters, and I won't do all of them. Maybe just the biggest ones that I notice, and also just to give an indication that you know there are some little secondary craters. There's one here, and there are some here. There's also this kind of funky little hook going on. So that's like, like a little bit of a bump here. I'm gonna put that in. There you go. I'm gonna make that a little darker. And um, so now, now I'm putting in like the little shadows. It's actually like a parallel bank of shadows here. I want to get down. More secondary craters. What else got, got going on? It's a very bumpy. Ooh, that's a little crater down here. That'd be good. That's actually two here. Uh, I feel like work a bit more on that part. And I think this comes down a bit as well. Actually, this comes down a bit, and I'm gonna add some gray. So I don't know if you can see that. I feel like it's a little blurry. Um, so now I'm doing all that little bit of detail work with the really with the with the tip of the of the pencil. Um, and I can really get into it. And so um, just one thing I wanna mention, I'm just gonna put this on the side so you can still see it if you're still drawing. So the thing with the crater is, you think of the like side view, okay? So um, impact comes from there and it's like, you got, a, you got a hole in the ground. So you think a crater is just basically an absence of regolith, an absence of, Moon, moon uh, lunar surface, but it's more than that because you get that impact. Actually, there's a bit of a bit of a bump here, 
a bit of a bump there. And sometimes if the impact was really high, you get that little central peak, right? So this is why when you look at a crater like this, that's a little shadow and that's a little light here. So when you're drawing craters and the light comes from this direction, um, you will draw your, like you, we have the shadow here like this. So this is our shadow, uh, this is very rough. But you also have, because of this, let's say the light comes from here, and our shadow is in here. And of course, this part is lit. And then here, we have shadow again. So this is why it really helps you to understand how moon craters are formed, because you are drawing them. And then you have a little bit of light here. So if it was gray around, we would leave a little light area there. Oh my god, that is so messy. And I, I think you're getting the gist of it. So you may notice somewhere else on this landscape, lunar landscape, we've got the exact opposite. We've got this, so we've got this happening. So that is basically uh, a little mount. So we've got still light coming, but we've got shadow on this side. And like I said earlier, the shadow gives us a really good indication of um, how big uh, this mount is, because you can compare the shadow to these shadows here. Alrighty. Okay, so I hope you had fun. Just going to look at the time. Yeah, I think we're nearly there at the full hour. I'm just going to keep this up there. If you, maybe I'm just going to keep this here. And thank you, and ask you if you have any questions. I'll be happy to answer them. And this is my email. Um, uh, no, this is my website. It has a contact page if you, if you want to get in touch with me, if you want to see more of the uh, Women with Impact uh, drawings, uh, you can check that out. So let me know if you have any questions. Thank you so much, Bettina. We have a couple questions here. Uh, is chaos terrain a term used for lunar features? Chaos terrain, it's, um, I know that it is used on other planets uh, and other moons. I, I'm not sure if that is also uh, part of lunar vocabulary. I use it, so I, I couldn't tell you exactly, sorry. I, but I think so. My guess is yes. Okay. And uh, the um, next question is, uh, will there be, there was a question, uh, I think, will we receive some emails to join more courses like this? So I can take that one. <laughs> so uh, yeah, if you join, if you, uh, I expect you're already on our mailing list if you heard about this workshop, uh, but if not, if you heard about it from someone else, you can, or found it on our website, I, uh, I'll put the, uh, the link up shortly. Um, and it's, and I can also put it in the chat and you can subscribe to our newsletter and all the details of all upcoming workshops uh, will be emailed to you about that as well and uh, we are working on uh, we're looking into running uh, uh, some more workshops like this so if it interested you I put the uh, link to a survey in the chat as well um, so please 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 uh, give us your feedback and that'll uh, uh, inform us on uh, on uh, more activities like this um, and uh, yep yeah, just like this free uh, to attend. <laughs> Pre-registration required. Um, uh, Asia was wondering if you could flip back to the different drawings. So oh, we'll yes. just, uh, uh, take some screenshots. Yes, let's do that because I was going to do that. Yes, so uh, let me start. So you start with the clock face to, you know, for your composition. So clock face, but then oh, can outline. You just get slower they just want to take so oh yes yeah. sorry 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 so um you can take it so the clock face for your composition so that's how you start decide uh, basically frame frame your subject in in your view field of view either round or not round then we've got outlines 
So this is when you put down the main characteristics of the crater. So that's two, that's outlines. Then we do the shadows. We go uh, straight to the darkest blacks, moon shadows. I don't know why this is kind of blurry. So shadows. Uh, then we go to the grays. And you can also use your uh, pencil as you're using it flat and have different kind of uh, terrains, the really flat one and the really sort of bumpy, bumpy chaotic ones. So you, you capture some of the geology. And as the last thing, you do the details, the little nooks and crannies and secondary craters and extra special bumps that you do with a really sharp pencil um, because you still have time to do it because it hasn't been clouded over yet. So those are your steps. Thank you so much. Nalem and Aiden want to know what was the name of this crater again? So it is Archimedes. And you'll find that a lot of the largest craters and the ones that are the easiest to spot on the moon are named after uh, Greek astronomers and philosophers and um, you know, um, Greek scientists. And there's a naming conventions of uh, how to name craters on the moon. They're typically named after uh, philosophers, but especially scientists, especially astronomers and, and mathematicians. I think I saw another question about, um, uh, yeah, I think you already answered that. Dominique had a question of who are craters named after, so you just answered yeah. that. Um, for, for the different women of impact, uh, I'm interested in, in what, what are some of the names? Like, who are some of the women? I think, I'm not sure if you mentioned that at the beginning, specifically some of the names, or? Yes, so it's the same naming conventions. So they are uh, typically uh, astronomers and mathematicians. They're all women uh, active in the STEM field. So we have, uh, for example, um, uh, Hypatia, so she's, you know, one of uh, uh, the ancient Greeks, uh, one of the, like, earliest mathematicians. Uh, we have Valentina Tereshkova, the first woman in space. So, you know, like, that's a big achievement as well. Uh, who else do we have? Um, let me see. I can I actually have the entire list here uh, in my Woman with Impact. Let me see. Uh, oh, yeah. So, oh, Amelia Earhart has one named after her. So she is the, um, uh, an aviator. Uh, she was uh, one of the first aviators. She uh, did all these crazy stunts, like flying across the ocean by herself. And she, um, her, her last greatest uh, stunt was to fly around the world um, in this little Electra propeller plane. Uh, at the uh, equator and she got lost in Indonesia so we don't know what happened to her uh, and they're still looking for a plane and people have all kinds of different ideas. Uh, Carolyn Herschel has a crater named after her um, and it's um, you know typically um, astronomers there were uh, a lot of female astronomers who uh, kind of accidentally became astronomers they were hired by an astronomer who had a lot of um, uh, glass plates, the photographs of the night sky, full with stars, and he didn't want to count them and classify them. And at that time, he just asked women to do it because women were, you know, that was kind of grunt work and was like, we don't need to pay these women all that much. Uh, this was kind of the Victorian era. And actually, these women finally had access to data because normally women were not allowed to uh, study science and astronomy at university. So through this kind of back door, um, they got their hands on all this stellar data and they made great discoveries about uh, stellar classifications, and variable stars, so, and they were called the human computer. So the first computers were women. Uh, I, think, um, I think that's it for 
questions. Um, there, uh, I'll, I have been recording uh, this workshop. There were some questions, but what if we can't take uh, photos of those those uh, steps? Um, so the uh, the recording will be on our website in the coming days, uh, so you can uh, find the link and uh, and watch back and pause and and maybe try one of that more challenging uh, craters that uh, Bettina showed as well. Um, I want to thank uh, Bettina very much and thank everyone who joined us today. Um, please join me all in thanking uh, Bettina for her time and for her wonderful sketching. Mm -hmm.